Mercedes Benz 300 SL was the pinnacle of performance at its time. Arguably, it is one of the most beautiful cars ever built and personally my favorite looking vehicle of all time. I think it looks phenomenal. Very few cars come close to what the 300 SL Gullwing looks like. At its time, the 300 SL was the fastest production car and it went on to win the Mille Miglia Rally, making it a true classic collectible car. Now, I can go on all about the 300 SL because it is my one of my favorite cars, but we are not here to talk about that. Say hello to the brand new SL55 AMG. This is the Konya impression and we create cool content around cool things. So follow us, like, comment, share, subscribe and enjoy the rest of this video on the SL55. Mercedes's new styling has been controversial. When the car was launched, people were either loving it or hating it. Because the looks have drastically changed. Gone are the boxy looking looks of Mercedes's. This has become more surface oriented, it's become more curvy. And the biggest controversial bit were the headlights because they look very slant-eyed and very narrow-bodied. Does it look well in person? I honestly think it does. I think this car has a lot of presence. Since the time I've got it specifically in this red color, people have been taking pictures of it non-stop. And yes, I know it is not another luxury brand, but this car attracts enough attention and it has a lot of presence as well. So I think Mercedes got the looks spot on. As for me, the overall look and aesthetic works. Now Mercedes pays homage to the original 300 SL by having these two body lines on the bonnet. As you can see, these curve and dip and honestly look very good. In fact, they look even better when you're sitting behind the steering wheel, when you're sitting and driving the car, these lines give you the sense of power, a sense of establishment, a sense of purpose behind the wheel. So, very good thought process by Mercedes in designing this front part. In true AMG style, Mercedes has given this car the Pan Americana grille with the Mercedes logos. Also, it has real carbon fiber everywhere. As per me, Mercedes makes one of the better looking carbon fibers. The entire weave is very detailed and you can see the depth of the weave and entire carbon fiber. So as for me, it's one of the better looking ones out there. Coming to the headlights, now if you go to see, they have a very distinctive profile, almost like eyes, they look like eyes to me. So what's wrong with them? Well, most people found them to be too small and too slanted or too narrow and too slanted. But I think they fit the profile of the car in the overall sense. All the ducts, all the vents that you see on this car are functional. That means all of them are designed to channel air for a very specific purpose. Talking about the side profile, there isn't much to discuss, but there is a lot of resemblance to the Mercedes AMG GT and the Mercedes AMG GT four door. Why? Because this is the first time AMG had a hand in designing the SL. What's going to happen down the line is AMG is going to take inspiration from the SL for the next generation AMG GT and the Fodo. But discussing Mercedes's future and past at the same time, this particular plaque over here is a resemblance and homage to the old 300 SLs side grille over here and went over here. In the past 23 years, Mercedes has had a folding hardtop on all their SL cars. So they're bringing back the soft top with this generation. The R230 was the first one to sport or feature a folding hardtop, foldable hardtop. And now we have a canvas roof back on the SL, mainly due to weight saving measures and also to save space in the boot. Talking about the rear, like I said, this takes inspiration from the other AMG cars. First of all, you have these tail lights which resemble the S-Class, the C-Class and the E-Class. 
So there's a lot of conjunction going on between the design languages of the entire Mercedes lineup. Am I a big fan of that? Honestly, no. I definitely think we should be able to identify each and every model from far away rather than coming and coming in closer and looking at the nomenclature or the numbers at the back. I really think Mercedes needs to get that distinguished design element into its entire lineup. So obviously you have the AMG logos over here. Now this is an active spoiler. It raises automatically depending on what and how you are driving. You can raise it manually as well at the switch of a button. Obviously there is real carbon fiber over here and the good looking chunky AMG exhaust. I really like the way AMG has designed these exhausts, how they look and how they sound. I think one of the better sounding modern cars today, considering the fact that we are getting sound emission norms as well. So I think this is one of the better sounding uh, exhaust and engine notes that we have in a modern car. Let's talk about the interiors on the SL55 AMG. The second you get in, it feels like a familiar space familiar to a modern day Mercedes. Obviously you have, yeah, see this always happens. Usually I remove it from the video, but this time I'm going to keep it. I'm sorry. Can you say that again, please? Cancel always activates, always activates for no reason at all. Anyways, coming back to the car, we have the AMG steering wheel with the controls over here. So this is for the drive dynamics so comfort sport sport plus and individual and then you have the one on the left which controls myriad of options traction control auto start stop spoiler uh, exhaust note multiple options are controlled by this button over here and then you have this whole complicated piece of steering spokes which i'm not even getting into because it's way too much in fact, like I always say, the MBUX is way too much for someone like me. I find it too overly stimulating, overly dramatic for no reason whatsoever. I would just happily connect my phone to the MBUX for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and just go. I don't care about any, anything else that the screen has to offer because it's not required as for me. But people who love tech, who love customization, who love getting into every single nitty gritty bit of the infotainment of the car features, they will absolutely love it. We have the Burmester 3D surround sound, which is spectacular for a convertible car. It sounds phenomenal. I think one of the best audio systems out there. The build quality is again top notch. You don't feel anything that's plasticky or bad quality. Everything is built solidly. Everything, everything feels chunky and solid and well put together. There are two rear seats, but they are absolutely useless. There is nobody that can sit in it. Well, actually, uh, a very small, tiny adult or a kid can sit in it, but only for a short duration of time. Obviously, you have the screen over here, the MBUX screen, which is from the S-Class, and it has a tilt feature depending on how the light is striking the screen because this is a convertible and coming to the convertible you have a button over here you open it it opens up in 15 seconds i think so yeah 15 seconds and it can open under 50 kilometers per hour done you have a convertible now you obviously have storage spaces over here wireless charging uh, usb-c charging storage space over here USB-C connectors inside and this armrest. I don't know what am I going to do with it because I don't see myself keeping my, my hand like that all the time. So this is, I mean, again, it pays homage to the old Mercedes with the control stock over here, the command system over here and the S-Class having that foldable keypad over here, openable keypad to press all the buttons. But I don't see the point of having it anymore. They could have removed it. What good is a performance car when you don't test the performance and you have to test the performance in an AMG car because it is Mercedes's 
signature product made in at the back. Did I say that right? I hope I did. The Mercedes AMG is the pinnacle of Mercedes's performance. It brings in everything that Mercedes is good at: tech, comfort, design, styling, and obviously performance. The SL55 AMG, the one that I'm driving, is one out of three trims available across the world. Depending on which part of the world you are in, you can get the SL in three engine options. The first one being the SL43 AMG with a four-cylinder, two-liter turbocharged engine. Yes, you heard that right. It is a four-cylinder, two-liter turbocharged engine producing 381 horsepower, which does zero to 100 in 4.9 seconds and is mated to Mercedes's 9-speed automatic gearbox. The gearbox stays the same for the 55 and the 63. Moving up the ladder is what I am driving, the SL55 AMG with the turbocharged V8, mated to the same 9-speed gearbox. And this sounds brilliant. A proper AMG rumble and burble. Well, I was in Sport Plus, but I'm going to move to drive to drive. Both the SL63 and the 55 get a twin turbo V8, which is what I'm driving right now. Well, I'm driving the 55 right now, and the 55 produces 476 horsepower and does 0 to 100 in 3.9 seconds. The 63 produces 583 horsepower and does 0 to 100 in 3.6 seconds not much of a difference over there. So, is the 55 the sweet spot to buy? We'll know that shortly. For the first time in SL history, the SL63 AMG comes with an all-wheel drive system. Also, rear-wheel drive steering. The SL55 AMG also gets the all-wheel drive system with the rear-wheel drive, but the SL43 comes only in rear-wheel drive, making it, I am assuming, probably the most engaging SL in today's day and range. This is a pure, pure GT car. The straight line performance is excellent. The comfort factor of just driving around and cruising around is brilliant. And Mercedes are the pioneers of making comfortable and gentle cruisers. But decide to floor it, move the car into Sport Plus and it just takes off. It is not violent, but the progression of power is smooth controllable and very manageable. All in all, it's a very fast and refined experience. Something most brands cannot achieve. Either they become too violent or they become too boring. This somehow maintains that sweet spot of straight line performance. Call it a German muscle car, if you will. What it lacks is feedback and handling. The steering has a lot of weight and heft but it's very ambiguous. There's a certain play in the steering wheel before it actually kicks in. And even though with the weight you may feel that it's giving you feedback, it's not giving you that much feedback. So you never know exactly how much grip the car has and the tires have. That sense of unsurety is where you will not push this car to its limits. But is it meant for that? No, it's not meant for that. It's meant for open top cruising. It's meant for going to the boulevard. It's meant for going to the shopping mall. It's meant to look pretty and make you look damn fine, sexy and rich, which it does the job perfectly well, especially in this brilliant shade of red. I love it. So has Mercedes got it right? As a GT car, as a cruiser, yes, but not as a sports car. If you're going to get a sports car into the mix, its cousin from Germany with a 60-year-old history will outperform it.